We're in London for a brand new event that's got the world of squash talking, and it's set in a part of the city that's got the world of international business talking. The nighttime skyline of London's new financial heart, Canary Wharf, provides a stunning backdrop and an exciting new venue for squash, the all glass atrium of the East Winter Garden. And squash brands from the range of international businesses based here, snapping up the exclusive 400 seats available, many more enjoying the VIP hospitality set right above the court. A great presentation and with it a new scoring format to add an edge to the sporting entertainment. But this not just some demonstration event, eight of the world's best are here to contest the trophy. Initially they'll play in two groups and leading the Canada place group, the man who walked into this event as the new world number one. How was John White feeling? It's uh, an amazing feeling and uh, you know just all the hard work that I've put in and uh, with the family that supported me over the last 10 years on the tour and you know it's only really been the last probably two, two and a half years, which is three years that I've got to the top four and realised that I'm up there with the better, better guys in the top four and, and knocking on the door for the major championships. The scoring system here this week seems to suit your game. Yeah, it is. It's it's because it's more of a you know sharp shooting game, and that's the way I play most of my matches. So you know, and you've got the fitness there as well. But it's it's going to shorten the games, and uh, you know, it's going to it's going to make it a lot more interesting for the crowd and for the players. We have to adjust very quickly because you can't get down five one or five two in, in this game. Lee Beachall currently at career best number four in the rankings after some excellent recent results. Former world champion David Palmer now at world number eight after recovering from injury. And there's the former world junior champion James Wilstrop who's really enjoying the event. I think that's the great thing about squash, you can put the car in different places and uh, this has proved to be a, a really unique setting. I mean it's been uh, a, a really great, great venue, it looks the part. Uh, it, and you know this, the whole setup has just been perfect. Everyone's fitted in nicely, and uh, the seating was just enough so that it's made it very close, compact, and uh, it's just made for a great atmosphere. Heading the Jubilee Place Group, current world number two Frenchman Thierry Linku. How has he been adapting to the new best of seven games format? It's, it's very different. It's more, much more explosive, I think. You know, it's much more intense. You cannot rely just on your. Fitness. I mean, you, you just you have to attack, be more aggressive, and uh, not be patient and wait for the for the mistake of the opponent. Peter Nickel, former world number one, is back at number three after illness, so he'll be on form. And he's joined by Nick Matthew of England, who's risen to a career best ten in the world rankings. And Asia's number one, Ong Beng Hee from Malaysia, world ranked 14. During the qualification round robin days, the talking point has been the seven-game format with each game only played to nine points, as opposed to 15 on the current Pro Tour format. What difference did the man who introduced it think it was making to tactics? It is an explosive game, but squash is an explosive game, and it's become even quicker and quicker when you play to 15. So up to nine, it, it is, you've got to get a good start, but it's still very tactical. I mean, you've still got to play the right shots. If you just go out and go go for every every winner you can, you're going to make too many mistakes. The player's going to pick it up and going to count you and, and play winners. So you've still got to play a decent game of squash. It's just a more attacking game of squash. And as a warm-up to the final, the local squash fans couldn't have wished for a better clash. These two don't like to give an inch to each other, no matter what the circumstances. Long and furious rallies delighting the packed crowd. But with only personal pride at stake, there was time for a bit of fun with a special guest. Squash mad rugby league star Ellery Hanley lending his own style of attack to John White's efforts against Peter Nichol.
But after all the fun was over, it was back to business for the two keen rivals, and it was Nickel who was to get to match point first. In the end, it was Nickel who was to take it three games to two. A fine taster for the final to come, and certainly everyone enjoying the atmosphere. But earlier, we asked the event organiser how he felt the week had gone. I mean, people have commented that the guys have really been going for it, and you know, the, the pace from the from the word go has been fantastic. I mean, we've had some wonderful games that have lasted, you know, from between 35 minutes to you know an, over an hour and 20 in a couple of the five set matches. So we, you know, we feel that we've made a, a winning formula here. It's a very vibrant area. You can just sense even when you come down here. The first time I came here, I was you know I was sort of could feel the buzz of the area. You just know it's a happening place. You, you really feel that any event that occurs here is going to be well supported, and people are going to get behind it. And it's just going to sort of be a, a great one on, from the word go. But it's you know got a massive amount of potential to be one of the, the the great sporting events on the squash calendar, if not you know the sporting calendar itself. We knew that squash is a, a very very popular sport amongst the business community, um, and we've been looking at Canary Wharf for, for a number of years to put on the event. We looked at a couple of venues. Uh, then we discovered that this fantastic building, the East Winter Garden, was being built and we're very, very excited by the prospects of that. And fortunately we had some great support from some of the local companies, ISS, um, for the Facilities Services, UK Packaging and the Hilton Docklands all, both got be all got behind the scheme. Um, and that gave us the impetus to, to put on this event which has been really well supported by the community. Time then for a great final, the rising new talent of the Yorkshireman versus the experience of the Frenchman. Well, he's played Linku twice before and lost both times, but with this new scoring system, predictions are out of the window. Interestingly enough, he lost his first game against fellow Yorkshireman, Lee Beachall, but he hit back to take two great scalps and reaffirm his ability to threaten even the most established stars. Last night against David, I was seeing the ball really well, and I think that was really helped when I played John the night before. That made me sort of see it even better the following night. I was just seeing it so clear and it all really came together well. I mean, they certainly do play at a real, real pace, so uh, yeah, it, was, it was good and I, I was playing well. I'm, I, you know, I, like, I, I feel confident, um, I'm not going to be negative. I'm going to go out there to win, uh, like I always do. Um, but I understand that it's going to be tough. Tough, yes, because the Frenchman has been the most predictable this week, playing mostly to his normal form. But the second round battle against Dong Beng He showed that he's beatable. He came back to dominate Peter Nickel, but being the professional he is, he's not taking his young opponent lightly. Well, he's, he's really impressive. I mean, uh, he's, he's been in nearly, well, everyone. Played him twice this, this season, I beat him twice, but uh, he's really dangerous. And so the crowd warmed up for this one. Join us for the action after the break. Welcome back to the East Winter Garden here at Canary Wharf. They've hosted promotions, they've hosted concerts, they've even hosted parties. But for the first time, squash is at the heart of the regenerated Docklands. And it's certainly proving popular as we go to the courtside now for the final with our commentators Alan Thatcher and quickly recovering from his runners-up final, the current world number three, Peter Nicholl. There's a full house here for the final of the Canary Wharf Classic. And the Londoners really getting behind James Wilstrop, the young Englishman, taking on Thierry Linku from France in the final, the first ever match in squash to be played best of seven games. And using this new pointer rally to nine scoring system. And I'm joined in the commentary box by Peter Nicholl, co-promoter, who's just won the third place playoff against top seed John White. Peter, great match in prospect. It certainly is. Both players are, are really keen on winning this. They're both very, very focused on the match. And it's great to see James playing in a major final here in London. Um, I, I, he's a very exciting prospect. And a great shot there to open up his account. So Wilstrop attacking from the off. Getting his first point on the board. Forehand volley drop. Great touch for a big guy. 
Yeah, it's going to be an interesting match because I think Thierry is going to be trying to contain James. And James, very attacking, very attacking. He will, he will be positive all the way through this match. And they're a perfect length from Linku into that back right corner. So the Frenchman nosing ahead 2-1 in this opening game. But it'll be a long way to the final tape. Like you said, Alan, it's the first time it's been a best of seven and it should be an interesting um, mental battle here to see how the players cope with, with that challenge of playing an extra couple of, couple of games. Now, Peter, from a player's perspective and a co-promoter's perspective, how do you think the scoring system has worked this week? I think the scoring system has worked beautifully. Uh, the length of the matches have been, have been about right for both players and, um, and for, the, for the crowd watching, uh, between sort of 27 minutes and an hour and 10, an hour and 15, so just long enough. I think it's worked. It's been, it's been very interesting it's, and it's worked very well. But the interesting thing, I think, for the spectators is that they've seen every match, every night, both players producing full-on attacking squash. And I think that's what they've paid the money to see. And they've loved every minute of the action so far. Well, you can see in the first, the first two, three minutes here, a lot of the action has been at the front of the court. Both players are almost in front of the tee attacking the ball. And that makes it very exciting uh, from a player's point of view to play in and also um, to watch. Well, this wonderful venue here, this glass exhibition hall at the East Winter Garden at Canary Wharf. Full house crowd this evening. And the extra bonus, the VIP area upstairs, Peter. Great view from upstairs. It's a fabulous view. You get the, I think it's almost perfect view of the squash. Superb shot from James Wilstrop. He just held that backhand drive, flicked it down the line. Three all, first game. That's one of James's strengths. Um, he can hold the ball from any position under any amount of pressure and still hit a fabulous shot. And as you saw there, Thierry just didn't even move for it. He didn't see it. Let right. right. ball. Right a little obstruction in the middle of the court. So the players play that rally again. This venue surrounded by all the big office blocks here at the Canary Wharf estate. Europe's biggest financial district. It's tight ball from Wilstrop. I think in that rally you could see that James was just in front of Thierry the whole point. Um, Thierry's got to get the ball past him if he, if he wants to get any dividend on this court. Because um, if James is allowed to control it, he will. Beautiful. goes short what a fantastic finish that overhead volley kill into the front right Nick Peter that's a fantastic shot it is most players would have been thinking about punching that deep but there was never any doubt in James's mind that was always going to go short and not only short but, but a wonderful shot that was a brilliant finish by this 20 year old from Pontefract in Yorkshire He's being stretched here by Linku. Succession of tight drops, but that's a loose ball from Wilstrop. Stroke to Linku. Both players there were covering an amazing amount of the court. And they both went from corner to corner. And James just um, squeezed one out into the middle and got a stroke against him. Well, that's how to respond. Another brilliant volley. First on the forehand, now on the backhand. Peter, that is how to return serve. And he, he's enjoying that as well. That was a that was a full tilt as well. He didn't didn't just put it in there yet, but he thumped it in there. So, a marvelous way to win a point. In goes the drop. In through lobs to get out of trouble. But James sends in the wrong way again. That's about three holes now in this first game that Thierry literally has not moved for. Um, he's, got to, he's got to try and get the ball past James and, and give himself a chance to get onto those. Well, I think already in the first dozen points we've seen a large portion of James Wilstrop's attacking repertoire. And there he goes short in the front left corner, moves to game ball, 8-4. Great start by James, which is exactly what he would have wanted. Nearly gets an ace off the serve. Link 
Who That's gets the let ball? Good decision by the referee there. There hasn't been any contentious decision. There's been no strokes, there's no real strokes given other than obvious ones, and he just played a let ball there. That was a very good decision by the referee. Great view of the players trading shots down the backhand, and Wilstock flips it deep again. Two great movers here, and Linku actually got the ball beyond James's reach there and wins with a straight forehand. That was the first time, I think, in the whole the whole game that Thierry's comfortably got in front of James, and that was the first time he got it past him with a, with a good good wide cross court. Very important for him to do that, and he managed to do it at that point. And then finishing the rally with that forehand kill. Front right Nick, brilliant finish. But will stop still on game ball at 8-6. That is also the beauty with the scoring. 4-8 um, down, seemed like the game, the, the game was over, but now he's back at 6-8. It's only a couple of points in it. Always a chance to come back, and Thierry will never, ever give up. Huge rally, this one. Wilstrop needs to, to win this to close out the game. And Linku needs to win it to stay in the game. This time Linku gets a penalty stroke. 7-8, he's closed that gap. Winning three points in a row. 7-8, Linku serving from the right. James just seemed to go a little bit nervous there, a little bit negative, and stopped his sort of free-falling attacking. But that, that could also be because Thierry managed to get the ball deeper and put him under a lot more pressure. Sends Linku. Corner to corner. In goes the drop. Now will stop at full stretch. Both players attacking this ball. Brilliant rally. Somehow will stop dug that ball out of the front right nick. He goes short. What a finish! James Wilstrup wins that first game with an incredible shot that flick across the front of the court. Brilliant way to finish the game, Peter. Yeah, a marvellous way to finish it. And here we see James Wilstrup attacking from the very start of the game with that forehand volley drop. And that's how he played the whole game, Peter. Yeah, under a lot of pressure in the middle part, but he's still always looking to, to take it in and attack. And even under a lot of pressure here at full stretch, he plays a, a wonderful winner to close out the game. So we rejoin the match in the third game. James Wilstrop leading two games to love. He powered through the second 9-5. And here we are at two all in the third game. Link who puts that in the tin, and Peter down. Nickel. What a start for James Wilstrop. Yeah, he's still attacking very well, um, in control of the game, in control of the tee, which is the most important thing. Um, Thierry really needs to, to step forward here on the court and try and get some sort of stranglehold in this game. Otherwise, he could be he could be going three love down here and almost almost completely out of the match. James Wilstrop, 20 years old, and he's taken on a guy who was ranked one in the world last month, in producing shots like that. And there's a stroke to Wilstrop, 4-2 ahead. Yeah, big, big two or three points now for both the players, especially Thierry. He's got to make a comeback here. He's got to try and, and, and force his way back into this game. And Linku. Solid, steady player. Never likes losing, especially to an Englishman. The Thierry is um, is uh, an incredible professional. Wasn't too impressed with that decision, Peter. I think it was just about a let, but it's one of those decisions that frustrates you because you sent the player the wrong way, but they can still get the ball. And it almost isn't your fault, but it still is a let. I think James got the benefit of the doubt. When you're nine foot three, I think most referees think you can get to anything. And the thing is, James almost can. <laughs> and 
that boast going in the tin. A bit of, a bit of a chat there, and James maybe loses a concentration. That was almost the, the bottom of the tin there. A loose return that time, just a let. We saw earlier that incredible backhand volley kill off the serve, but that one a little bit looser from James Rolstrup. No doubt James getting some words of wisdom from his father Malcolm. Great shot there from Linku. Takes him level at 4-all. Yeah, Malcolm comes around to most of the tournaments with James. He's um, obviously coached him all his life and, and coached many other um, fantastic squash players, including um, Lee Beachel. It was Lee who beat James on the opening day here at Canary Wharf. He's had a few blisters, I understand, Peter, from Bermuda. Yeah, Lee, Lee had a wonderful event in Bermuda and won it reasonably comfortably. Um, and I think uh, it, it just it's very warm and, and humid um, playing in Bermuda, and I think he just um, wore most of his foot away. <laughs> and we, came, we, we all came back just literally the day this started, so it's been, it's been a tough schedule. Linku now looking in a lot more control, Peter. Yeah, you just see he's, he's slightly up and on it, and James is slightly behind the pace of the play, like there with the counter drops. It was James that was coming in behind and a bit late. So maybe he's just feeling it a little bit. He looks a, a tiny bit tired. Well, we'll see how it affects him when you join us for the rest of the action after the break. <laughs> Welcome back as we rejoin Alan and Peter for commentary in game three. Linku from 4-2 down, now 6-4 ahead. Again, Milstrop trying to send him the wrong way. Linku at full stretch. And Milstrop volleys that into the tin as Linku plays it off the back wall. Well, they, they James is attacking, but he's hitting the tin. Well, they weren't going down in the first two games, so I don't know exactly what it is. He is a little bit tired. I, I def that Thierry's definitely stepped up, making it harder for him. But um, those shouldn't go down. And another one. That's four tins in the last five, six rallies. Takes Linku from 4-2 down to game ball at 8-4. Huge turnaround. You can just see the confidence Thierry has now as well. When he's serving, he's stepping forward. He, he looks like a man that can win now. Wilstrop getting a point back with that sliced cross court. But Linku holding three game balls, and there it is. Another Wilstrop volley into the tin, and Linku takes the third game 9 5. But well, Peter, you don't have to be a genius to see where it all went wrong for James. No, he made far too many mistakes in this game. I think it was six out of the nine points that Thierry won. And you can just see by his body language here, he's just looking a little bit forlorn, a little bit upset with himself. And if I was Thierry, I'd be getting a lot of confidence from this. So Thierry Linku back in the match, takes that third game as James Wilstrop puts another ball in the tin and another. Well, can Linku turn the tables as we pick up the match at three points all in the fourth game? So we rejoin the match in the fourth game. James Wilstrop having opened up a two-love lead, allowing Thierry Linku to take the third 9-5. Peter, very interesting part of the match. James looking a little bit despondent in that third game. He was, but he's come back out here and he's um He's just one point ahead now, but it's, it's very tight in this one. So the next few points, be interesting to see if he can actually put a run together or who, who can put the run together now to, to take this game. And Thierry having a little discussion here with the referee. James hit the ball back to himself. I always find it quite funny, Alan, that you know, the first couple of games there's no decisions and so forth. And as soon as it gets a little bit tighter, a little bit close, players are getting a little bit tired and they start getting a bit tetchy and the referee comes into play. And, uh, Linku unable to get any part of the racket on that drive from Wilstrop that dies clinging to that forehand wall. So Wilstrop ahead 5-3. A 
And there, Linku finishing in clinical style. He certainly enjoyed that, Peter. Yeah, I think he's um, he's fired up now. I think the, both the referees and the crowd have got to him a little bit, and he um, he's desperate to desperate to win. So Linku looking pumped up here. But Wilstrop 5-4 ahead. And leading two games to one here in this final at Canary Wharf. Another let ball. Linku shakes his head again. You can see he's just, although he's he's pushing forward and he's he's excitable and he's he wants to win, he's, he just looks a little bit too too lively. You know, he's not, not quite seeing the balls clearly, and James sort of got him there in the boast and he wants to win every point quickly and you can just see he's a bit unsettled and he's got to, he's got to relax a little bit, otherwise he'll um he'll, he'll lose his way in this match. Fabulous shot from Wilstrop. Link who's serving from the right. And Wilstrop hitting that cross-court volley nick off the serve. 6-4 ahead, James Wilstrop. In goes the volley again. Much better control in this game from Wilstrop. Tighter, crisper, more accurate volleys. Same from Linku there, that was tight. There's Wilstrop scraping two shots in a row off the side wall. Match of supreme quality. Wilstrop trying the little flick again. He's not going to get him with that, that <laughs> flick. <laughs> I think Thierry's seen that one before. A penalty stroke to Wilstrop. The biggest difference with this game is James playing the rally out to its conclusion. He's not looking for the winner after the first three or four shots. He's actually just playing it out and getting the ball back and playing good shots. And eventually wins the penalty stroke in that last point. Wilstrop leading 7-4. Just two points away from a 3-1 lead, which would normally be the match, but here we're playing best of seven. Linku gets a let. Yeah, I wonder if he'll turn around and try and shake Thierry's hand after this game. <laughs> be worth a try. Certainly would. I think the crowd are willing it to go on longer. They're enjoying everything that's been put in front of them this week. Brilliant new tournament, fabulous new venue. And the players embracing the spirit of the tournament. It's a real top quality squash. Thierry has really extended James in this rally. and oh. What a finish. What were you saying, Peter? <laughs> Just, he's been extending him um, in this rally and James is looking a bit tired. But when you can play shots like that to finish the, finish the point, does it matter? And that takes... A tired looking Wilstrop to 8 4 game ball. Wilstrop attacking from all points of the court. Slicing it in from the back again. And going for the kill. Linku puts it in the tin. Well, Linku falters at the vital moment. And it looked as though it was all over as we move forward to game five. Once again with Alan Thatcher and Peter Nickel courtside. So we rejoin the match with the young Englishman, James Wilstrop, on match ball. And Thierry Linku there with his hands on his knees. Wilstrop serves. 8-6 ahead. A tired looking backhand drop into the tin there, Peter. Well they're, they're both looking extremely tired, but that was a that was a very poor shot by James. It was it wasn't even the middle of the tin, I think it was near the bottom. One more match point, though. So Linku, desperate to stay in the match, serving from the right, 7-8 down. And Linku putting that ball in the nick in the front left corner. I think he was a bit fortunate there, Alan. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't meant. He was just getting, retrieving the ball from the back corner and... Well, you need the luck sometimes. Eight all. We are now on the juice scoring system. The first player to go two points clear wins the game for Linku and Wilstrop. It will be the match. It's quite interesting. They're having a little chat to each other there. Smiles have gone. <laughs> They're just having more of a serious chat. Just reminding each other of the new rules this week. Hope the referee can remember.
Oh, that's tight. Wilstrop back on match ball. The crowd loving it. With the signature shot, the, the volley, backhand volley drop winner. Advantage. Wilstrop. Great view of this rally up and down the forehand wall. And that's a tight ball from Linku. Buries it in the back right corner. Juice. Thierry is just isn't going to give up here, Alan. Well, Linku's got the serve, but the crowd are right behind James Wilstrop. Patient start to this rally. Loose one from Wilstrop. Linku sends him deep again. Sense the tension building here at Canary Wharf. As this rally develops, that's in the tin from James Wilstrop. I was just about to say that he was being very careful there, and then he just made a very rash decision there and hit the ball in the tin. So Linku bouncing the ball before serving. Just getting settled, getting composed. Looking to work James Wilstrop into the back corners. It sounded like a string breaking there. Uh -huh. And James just looked at the bracket he has and I think he's broken the string. not allowed to come off till the rally ends so it'll be interesting to see how James deals with that situation if it was me I'd be engineering a let ball as quick as possible <laughs> and he's still taking it in short it just shows how much confidence he has and ability because and with one string gone in your rack it's very difficult to control the ball Doing well to keep it straight. Thierry probably knows it as well. He's always hitting cross court, making sure he's never in the way, keeping the rally going. James still hitting some good shots with that broken string. It's phenomenal control by James. trying to hold it, still trying to send Thierry Linku the wrong way. Again, that's a superb length, but Linku shuffling into the back right corner. And this is building into a big rally, Peter. It's not exactly the right time to have the longest rally of the match with a broken string, but <laughs> a great rally. Great quality. Going short, Wilstrop lobbing. That's a great view of that backhand from James Wilstrop. Wilstrop still attacking, just flicking that forehand drop in. Link who has a lean. Two tired bodies on there. Wilstrop goes off to change his broken racket. And Linku gets a no let. That's remarkable. After the effort they put in that rally to get a no let there is just. It was an easy one. It was a simple, simple let ball. Well, he wanted to go in a straight line. Just leans on James's back and then penalised for not making a second attempt. And there's more fun to come after the break.
So back to Canary Wolf and the final and match ball again. Can Wilstrop nail it this time? So Wilstrop serving now from the left for the match. Oh. Short, that's in the tin. Another tin. He's tinned it on match ball. Loose ball from Linku. And James, tired footwork. Didn't step away, didn't give himself room for a clean swing. Put the ball in the tin. Lucky let off for Linku. Tight in the tin from Wilstrop. And frustration there from James, allowing that serve to go in the back corner and having to boast it out, giving Thierry the chance to, to play that winner. So Linku now holding game ball. It's a fabulous scoring system. Wow, oh. that's a phenomenal shot by Wilstrop and Linku tumbles in a heap on the floor in the back right corner. He tried everything to get that ball back, <laughs> but couldn't quite contort his body. Use again. This is great squash. Every rally, a crisis moment. Tremendous excitement for this full house crowd. The quality has gone up as well in the last few points. It's a James Wilstrup now claiming that Thierry Linku pushed him into the path of the ball to engineer the stroke. I just don't think he let him out. He didn't exactly push him in there, but um, probably a stroke, but you know, very difficult. Both players are getting tired and finding it difficult to clear the ball. So advantage Linku. Wilstrup going for that soft, delicate volley drop, but Linku digging everything back. In goes the drop, Linku lobs. Big, big rally building here. Linku drops his racket. As he goes past Wilstrop, gets the let. He just about got past him there, Alan, I think. <laughs> <laughs> James wasn't going to be moving out of the way from him anytime soon. Nice little breather for both players. Advantage Linku. What's impressive with both the players, they're still trying to take it early. They're still trying to push the pace and control the game. So even at this stage and both being so tired. Well, the match now, some 65 minutes long. from Linku, brilliant retrieving from Wilstrop, but not that time, and Linku takes the game, 10-8. And here we see how Thierry Linku claws his way back from the brink of defeat to take this match into a sixth game. Yeah, I think he slowed, he slowed James down there, Alan. He um, put him deep, put him straight a lot. And you see James getting very weary. And there, Thierry Link, who hammers that ball into the back right corner to take the game. What a finish. <laughs> so we are now entering uncharted territory in the world of squash. With a match going into a sixth game for the very first time. James Wilstrop attacking right from the start with that little cross-court flick. It's a great start, Peter. It was a fabulous touch there, and um, Thierry was actually nowhere near it. He didn't even make an effort to get to it, so... Finishing the last game, it was, it was James that looked more tired. So we'll see how this... And there he goes again. Backhand cross-court slice volley. He's obviously decided to take the attack to the Frenchman right from the off. He's back up that court again and he's taking everything on the volley. If he goes short, hits it deep. That's in the tin. 
Will Strop going for an ambitious drop from the back right hand corner. You can see they're both going for it though. They're both not, not they're gonna go short, they're gonna they're gonna step forward and really make an effort to, to control this this game. Goes with a volley kill. Oh. Linku puts that ball in the tin. Just got his feet tied up there, Peter. Yeah, he's looking very heavy. So James Wilstrop, having looked very, very tired at the end of that last game, now sneaking ahead 4-1. And yet another wonderful shot. I mean, he's under full pressure there. He's been on court for well over an hour, and he still manages to control that ball at full stretch. Superb shot. And we're in uncharted territory here for squash. And again. <laughs> the players in a sixth game. And Wilstrop firing in winners at will at the front of the court, racing ahead 5-1. Peter, what a start to this This is game. what's impressive about this, this guy. You know, he, he's tired. It's been a tough match. And he's just hit winner after winner. And there, that's beyond Linku's reach. Wilstrop just chopping him up at the front of the court. Loose ball from Linku. Wilstrop drives it straight. 6-1 ahead. I'd like to have heard what um, Malcolm gave his son, what, what advice he gave him in between those games, because if it was come out and attack everything, it's, it's worked. Thierry's looking ex exceptionally tired now, his legs looking very heavy. Wilstrop lobs, forces Linku deep, sat up at the front, in goes another flick, and an easy volley kill for Wilstrop. This 20-year-old from Yorkshire is now totally dominating the world number two. Seven one ahead, two points away from the title. Can't see any way back for Thierry now, he's hanging in there, but just, just feel that James will manage to hit a couple winners in the next few points to, to close the match out. And there's a tired looking backhand volley from Linku into the tin. Takes Wilstrop to 8-1, match ball again. What a performance. That was out from Wilstrop. 2-8 Linku. What a climax to a brilliant week of squash here at Canary Wharf. Linku goes for a winner. And Wilstrop drives it deep. Wilstrop takes the very first Canary Wharf squash classic title, winning four games to two against the Frenchman Thierry Linku, the world number two. A great week for James Wilstrop. A uh, deserving winner for the week. James has been performing superbly all week um, and there he is accepting the trophy. Absolutely delighted, played great, I've played really well all week and uh, you know like I said it, to beat these players in this the company that's been here this week, eight of the best players in the world, it was, it's been a great experience for me and uh, it'll, hopefully it'll give me a lot of confidence and uh, just played played really well and, and beat beat the guys that I had to beat and it was just a really three days three or four days of really great performances so uh, it was just good that I could do it day after day. It was a good fight, not an exhibition match, you know, and it was a real good fight and uh, I had to really work hard to to get back into the match. I was two left down, then three one down. So I, well, I gave everything I had. I thought that uh, I had some pretty tough matches this week as well. 3-2 against Bengi and yesterday it was a good, well, a huge effort, you know, to beat uh, Peter. So maybe I wasn't that fresh, but uh, that's that's the format of, the, of, well, of this competition. But uh, obviously he played really well and and was on a tee, you know. The, the, the whole setup's been excellent, first class, and uh, it's great for the game that we've got so many people coming to watch and getting enthusiastic like they were tonight. And uh, hopefully, we, the eight players that have been here this week, we've done something for the game. We've, we've you know, got a few more people playing the game, and that, that's what we want. You know, it's, it's a great spot. And so say all of us, but it's goodbye until next year from Canary Wharf.